Alors, welcome to a new special series of our podcast dedicated to the Olympic Games in Tahiti. We interview for you some of the protagonists of this Olympic adventure. Today with us, representing Brazil, Joao Chanka. Hello, Joao. Welcome to the show. Where are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks. Um, everything's okay. Pre-season already started, so I'm just spending my time in Rio training a lot and not surfing much because it's even super flat for us but enjoying home family everyone okay so it's nice sometimes to have some quiet time right yeah not so quiet yeah because <laughs> beginning of preseason, we I started training again getting back on the track so anxiety and all the pressure starts clicking in slowly but for the next season just pretty excited they quite a lot at home resting on the intervals up between training sessions so been watching plenty of heats and that really gets me fired up okay how do you deal with the anxiety since you were you you said that is uh what what makes them go away uh, I think for me, for me, keep working, um, trying to stick with the good routine of training and surfing and having fun that, that really takes the pressure away for me. So that's what I try to do most of the time when like the anxiety starts clicking in, I try to like just focus like, keep, and keep doing the tasks daily task is so yeah so it goes away definitely there is no better cure than being in the ocean and take some good waves right without maybe yeah. just with friends you know for sure yeah. for sure there's not definitely today we're gonna talk about uh, the uh, olympics this is a series dedicated to the olympics but uh, also many other things but the first thing first question i ask everyone on the show in your opinion, what is the most important thing in surfing? Competitive surfing or just surfing itself? Since you are a pro surfer, then competitive surfing. <laughs> uh, for me, well, like, that's a pretty hard question to pick because overall surfing is so amazing. Every, everything is so amazing about this sport the the way that it turns out olympic today nowadays like i'm sure we have like a lot of surfers that dream about this title and being a world champion for me it's i think it's the the thing that i that i had my eyes for the most part of my life but also just being a free surfer just being a regular surfer uh, it's just amazing to spend time in the water and spend time like surfing incredible waves. How good is surfing incredible waves? For me, it's like to do a surf trip and to chase perfect waves, probably like one of the best feelings that you can get in this sport. Yeah, because you, I, again, we were talking about pressure. You don't have that and you have just your trip mate and people that are coming with you and and that's it right because at the end even pro surfers are norm prefer a normal surfer to have fun and like uh without everything that goes around right together with yeah them. that's cool you are quite already qualified for the olympic games and it's such like uh, a great uh, great thing so many of uh, uh, other surfers, they have still to uh, to get into the qualification. So while you're on one of the first ones. So how do you feel knowing that you're going to go to Chopu and you're going to compete for something that uh, is just amazing? Everybody will watch, surfer or non-surfer. Well, like still, still trying to put everything together about this. Um, Olympics seems to everyone super super big and size of event and size of like accomplishment. So I really think like I had no idea one year ago, two years ago, 
I had no idea what it means like, but after this, this past year, I just, I've been putting so much work and been competing along to, along to, along with Felipe and Gabriel. This really had been like, really had been a battle until the last moment of qualification. So for me, it was pretty hard to get this spot. So it's already a really big thing for me. So it would be a dream to like re represent Brazil and all the nations on that event and hope for some good surfing because Tahiti is really one of the best places in the world. So having the biggest the biggest competitive sports event like in the world at one of like the best ways in the world. I feel it's just a pretty big thing and come back from that event with the uh, medal. It's pretty important. So it would be huge. I feel. Yeah, of course it will be huge, you know, because at the end we were talking before a uh, winning a world, a world championship, like a world title is you that you win. And then you're also Brazilian. But in the Olympic Games, you win, but the country wins, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like kind of a, a bigger weight, if you want to call it like that. But, uh, but of course, I mean, uh, you Brazilian guys, me, I'm Italian, so, uh, we don't have so many chances, but uh, you Brazilian guys have a lot of chance of winning the, the ma all medals, <laughs> it's not only one. <laughs> that's that's cool. And uh, of course, you surfed Chopu before. So, in your opinion, what is the secret of uh, this wave? You know, like uh, if there is any. Oh, uh, well, being one of the most dangerous or probably one of the most perfect waves on earth with Chops is just incredible in every scale. So. Pretty hard wave when it when you reach that like double overhead size. I feel it could get like really serious technique going on, and just not a hard, just not a easy takeoff, you know, and definitely not a easy wave to do. So, yeah, but it's when you reach that those those days, it's just like. Super incredible and unmatched to any other wave in Earth. So, hope it's like this. Um, but I feel the secret gonna be to be on the best waves, surfing the best waves to the best quality waves on the heat. Cause we have so many, besides Olympic, it's still like, uh, a, a world surfing event. So we got John John, we got everyone else that we have on the world tour, we got it there. So even if it's a bit far away, uh, the, the Olympic, uh, are you starting to prepare? Will you start to prepare anytime soon, uh, for, for that? Uh, how does it work for you? You're going to move over there. Um, uh, I feel if I'm on a good space with my mind, body and surfing, I will be ready for the Olympics just as I, I'm going to be ready for the world tour. So okay. that's what I'm focusing on, just being fit and training a lot. So like, just try to better my situation, better my, my performance for 2024. So like, I can feel good about myself. And once I feel good about myself, I feel I'm ready for the Olympics. Okay. It looks like a smooth thing. So I like that. <laughs> uh, do you have a coach uh, with you or, or you do it all yourself? How does it work? I, I have my team working here. Part of my team is my family, which I love to spend time with. Oh. Moms, moms take care of the diet. Moms take care of the kitchen and, um, family take care of the health mental health and okay. just being here feeling good uh i have louise pinga that works with me on the events and manager manages me uh with sponsorship and other stuff takes takes care of me and i have my 
Gabriel, that is my my trainer that does like the the physical part outside of the water. So not a lot, a whole lot of people, but super important to reliable. Exactly. Reliable. You know, I imagine when you were talking about your mom that is taking care of the or the food or the alimentation that you have, I was thinking about if my mom, Italian, would take care of me, most probably would gain 30 kilos because all the pasta, pizza, and all the carbs that us Italian were used to eat. <laughs> that for sure. Uh, that's but pretty well, good. I would have to fire her. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, good that you're doing all uh, all uh, in your family, and actually your uh, your family is your best best supporter. So that's in any case, right? Of course, your family incredible surfers. So that is a is a plus, right? But uh, but definitely they will take care of you in uh, the best way they could. There is a question that I ask uh, everyone in the show at a certain point is about meeting surfers. So in your life, uh, more than your career, you met a lot of surfers. Some of them were famous. Some of them were maybe not famous. Was there a meeting that was particularly meaningful for you with one of them? Uh, well, like, I think one of the surfers that, like, had most or biggest impact in, in meeting-wise for me, it would be Owen Wright and Nick Fanny. Okay. Both both really good gentlemen and just a whole model outside of the water, as inside of the water. So that's what I look at. You, so, you yeah. two legendary names. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. They were really nice to me. Fantastic. So you were able to, to see them uh, competing by yes, Owen Wright, yes, of course, Mick Fanning as well. No, I I was not never able to compete at the same event as Mick, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's at least having met him and uh, at least seeing him as a reference. I think is that important enough, right? So yeah, for sure. And tell me your relationship with surfboards, right? Uh, I mean, I spoke with so many pro surfers and they told me, like, sometimes we find one surfboard we think is perfect and we never find one more surfboard that that is the same. Do you have the same kind of superstitious sometimes that when you find a surfboard? Not really. No? Okay. Interesting. No, not really. I've been, I've been working with CI lately and on the past two years now. So it, it, the boards has been like working great. And I feel that my surfing has been improving a lot. So we consistently have been finding something better for my surfing and something that suits the situation better than that I'm at. So yeah, it, it's that I feel that's the fun thing about it because it never gets sold, you know? Okay, okay. I the but definitely, you know, they are uh, amazing uh, shapers. So I'm sure you are in good hands. But uh, going back with the time, what was the first proper surfboards like? The one that you really wanted to have it was some of the surfboards in your family, or was something that has been bought for you? No, all my family grew up in Sakurama, which is the town that has the world tour stop nowadays so my parent was a surfer before i came to the world so it was something that came really naturally for me like surfboards everything about surfing just spent the day at the beach since a kid so yeah it it, it been really natural for me since then and the surfboard, so you got one of the surfboards of your father and then you start to, to have your own? That is that the way you work? Yeah, that's right. That's right. My first, I feel my first surfing experience was in one of my father's boards. So, yeah, since been going like, like that, 
Okay. For the whole life, yeah. Okay, okay. It's a good is a good starting point. Not all the surfers they have this opportunity to to have like uh, to start with a quiver already. <laughs> so it's great. It's great. You have the choice. It is. It is. Before you were telling me about free surfing, is there a trip that uh, was like fantastic or better than anybody any other trip that you have done in your life as a free surfer? So not on the tour. I never. I never done much surf trips, you know. I was never able to do it. Back in the day, I did. I had a sponsor, and with the qualification on the line, we would always like not find much much time to do surf trips. So, but I had a feel. I had one surf trip that like I I feel it was one of my favorites, where like I really got to feel everything about surfing was. Mexico, one of my, I think the second time that I went there with my family. And it was just a trip that all around I was surfing big waves, I was surfing barrel waves, I was surfing good waves to high performance. So like, all around that that was the perfect trip for me, you know, and one one recent one was the the one that I did with Jack to Fiji. And Yago, which is one of my best friends on tour. And it was just incredible. We we got the, the right swell for the wave and it's just like pretty good. It was pretty, pretty good. In terms of uh, emotion, this is my last question and then it's a short Q&A session, but in terms of emotions, can you already picture the day you will work with all the other athletes representing Brazil and you will enter in the stadium, in the Olympic Stadium in Paris? Can you really picture that in your mind or something that you just leave the moment? I don't. I don't. Just coming to coming to three years ago, I really didn't, didn't imagine like everything that has been happening in my life to happen. It's been just a life full of joy and full of like cool experience. And I've been so fortunate. So I really feel that I really like have just to enjoy moment by moment, day by day. So Olympic should be like pretty much one of the most special moments of my life. So I'm really looking forward to that day. I hope I get the opportunity to go to Paris. Um, to Paris, I say to the country, like, go and be part of the ceremony and all the stuff. So, yeah, because that will be fun. I like the idea of living day by day. It's uh, it's the best, right? So you don't no pressure. <laughs> pressure free. Yeah. Pressure free. So we just finished the interview with a short Q&A session. So question answer. Please answer the first thing that comes up to your mind. This question okay. I ask everyone on the show, they are all the same for every single guest. So the best surfboard okay. that you ever rode? Channel Island, yeah. Almeric. Almeric, of course. Um sure. the best uh your favorite shaper. I guess you will answer the same. <laughs> Brett, Brett. I have such a good relationship with the man. I was calling him like right before the interview, and we were like just have a chat like about everything else not even about boards that's how good it is so. oh wow yeah that's great definitely um your favorite song or kind of music uh rap rap okay. Okay. Nice okay. yeah today's rap or like back in the days what is uh it's like from- back in the days are pretty good they're <laughs> pretty a uh, match I like that. Me too. Uh, your favorite surf spot? Uh, home. Home, Sakurama. Okay. Favorite surfer of all time? Mick Fanny. Okay, yeah, that, that one. Okay, we, you told me about. And the last question. I feel, yeah, tell me, tell me. Uh, I feel it's everyone's favorite surfer. I'm just a... Uh, <laughs> And the last question is a little bit unusual. Please don't t- don't ask me why I came up with this question. I don't remember, but now I have to ask you. Your best relationship advice? 
relationship advice yeah uh, romantic relationship friendship relationship as any anything that comes up to your mind i feel just be honest to yourself first then to be with other people if you're good to yourself you're good to everybody else around you so yeah definitely i totally agree with you i totally agree with you yeah it's a good starting point yeah, let's say in that way thank you so much y'all for taking the time to talk with me today and i look thank forward you. to pleasure you soon ciao bye bye thank ciao you. Hi, it's me again. I hope you enjoyed our today's episode. If you want to know more about us, please follow www.thetempleofsurf.com and all our social media. Mahalo!